Hey everyone, and welcome back to Packet Tracer 101. In this lesson, we are gonna be covering the editing tools. Our editing tools allow us to format our network diagram, and it helps give it that professional look, and it helps us make it easier for uh, folks to navigate around our Packet Tracer labs and scenarios and examples that we provide. Most of these tools are commonly found in everyday applications. We just wanna make sure that you know where to find them and how to use them in Packet Tracer, and it's just important to know how to stop using them. So we're just gonna cover them here at a basic fundamental level. We just want to make sure you know where to find the tools, how to use the tools in Packet Tracer, and most importantly, how to stop using them because you may find that one or two of these may be a little bit tricky to use or stop using. So let's jump into this and start talking about the tools that we're going to cover in this lesson, starting with how to delete objects, the undo and redo feature, zooming in and out, creating custom labels, and then the drawing palette, how to draw straight lines, rectangles, and freeform drawing. To find these tools, we can just go to the menu bar at the top. The undo and redo buttons are in the first row. Next to that, we can find our zoom in and out buttons. And in the second row, we'll find our delete objects button. And next to that, we'll find our custom labels button. And in that same row, we'll find our drawing palette. So let's look at each one of these individually, starting with deleting objects. There are three ways to delete an object in Packet Tracer. The first way, you can simply go in and highlight the object or objects and press your delete key on your keyboard. You'll get a confirmation dialog box that'll pop up the usual, are you sure you want to delete this? Yes, of course, just go ahead and click OK. The second way would be to highlight the object or objects and press the delete button that's up in the menu bar. You'll also get the same dialog confirmation box. The third way would be to click the delete button with nothing highlighted. Once you click that delete button, you are now activating delete mode. Then anything you click on will disappear. You could tell when you're in delete mode after you delete an object or if you're using the third method and nothing's highlighted and you just go up and click the delete button, you'll see your cursor will change from its normal cursor self to what looks like a gun sight tilted at a 45 degree angle, just like you see here. That means you're still in delete mode. So if you delete an object and your cursor changes to that, and next you wanna go into the command line and you click on an object, you're going to delete it instead because that's your cursor. So to get out of delete mode, you just use the escape key on your keyboard. And for any of the other modes that we might get ourselves into, the way to get back out to our normal cursor mode is by using your escape key on your keyboard. So let's take a look at deleting objects in Packet Tracer. The first way you can highlight the object and then just press the delete key on your keyboard. It will ask you, do you want to delete it? Of course we do. Notice after doing so that our cursor changes to that delete mode. So I'm still in delete mode. So just let me press escape and we can get back out. The second way, highlight an object and go up and press the delete key on the menu bar and you get the same box. Are you sure you want to delete? We sure do. I do notice that after deleting this time as well, my cursor is now stuck in delete mode. So we just have to hit escape to get out of that as well. The third way to do it is with nothing highlighted, click on the delete button. Notice I'm now in delete mode again. Anything I click on disappears. I wanna get rid of that cable, it's gone. The switch, bye-bye. That router, peace out. And again, to get out of delete mode, I just press escape. So delete's a basic feature, and that's how you'd use it in Packet Tracer. The next tool, the undo and redo buttons. These are just the same as you've seen in any Microsoft application. So the first button to the left is the undo button, and it works just like Control Z in a Microsoft application. So whatever you just did, it'll reverse the change. So if you just deleted an object, it puts the object back in. If you just added a device to the network and you undo it, then it takes it back out. The other button is the redo button, and that's just the opposite of undo. So we can put something that you've just removed back in. You can go back and forth as an example if you're comparing something or just to simplify your process. So let's just take a look at this. We'll go into delete mode and I'll delete router zero. And then I say to myself, oops, I didn't want to do that. So I can go up here to the undo button. Now the router's back. Now what about redo? The last thing that was done was this router was added to the network. So redo means delete it. Bring it back, delete it. 
The one thing about redo and undo features that is completely different than a Microsoft application is that it's a one-step deal. So I think we've all used control Z functions in Microsoft Windows, and you can control Z your way back through several things you've done. This feature in Packet Tracer is only good for the last thing that you did. So if I were to delete router zero and then delete switch zero, and then I clicked undo, it would put switch zero back in. And if I clicked undo again, nothing would happen. It would not put the router zero back in here. So just be careful of what you get rid of. The next feature we're gonna talk about is zoom in and out. Folks should be really familiar with this one. It's three magnifying glasses. The one on the left with the plus predictably means zoom in. The one with the minus means zoom out. And the one with the R just resets it back to the default view. If you're not sure where you're at, how far you've gone in or out, you could just click on that R and it puts you back to that default view. So if you highlight everything, I can drag the entire diagram over here and then zoom in. I can zoom back out and get really tiny or just click the R and it could take me back to where I was to begin with. And of course I was right there. So again, a very common feature everybody's used to. That's how and where you do it in Packet Tracer. The next one that's very important is labels. And the label button looks sort of like a clipboard. So you can click on that and the label icon and your cursor will change to a label mode. You'll notice that my cursor is normally an arrow. So it changes from the arrow to an insert mode. Looks kind of like an eye beam when I'm in insert mode. Every place in the diagram that I click will attempt to open up a dialog box for me to type in. So when I'm done with insert mode, I'm putting all my labels in and just like delete mode, I'm gonna press the escape key to get back out. So let's take a look at labels. First of all, there's already some labels that are attached to devices and we've seen these. I can click on the label carefully and you've gotta be careful. If you go a little too high, then you click on the device and open it. Then click on the label and I could change the name of it if I want. The one thing about these device labels that is unique to device labels is that no two devices can have the same name. I can have the host name on five routers be R1 or be the same, but the labels have to be a different name. So if I wanna add unique labels, one thing I like to do is if I hover over here, I'll see what these ports are. I got gig 00 and gig 01. Notice that gig 00 covers up the router icon, and I don't like that. So if I were to say, click on just automatically add the link labels, that's where it would put them. I like to have it, but I don't like the placement. So what I'll do is go up and just create my own. Gig 01, gig 00, and then what I could do is go in and put them exactly where I want. Make sure that they're all lined up and even and everything looks pretty and they don't interfere with anything else. So labels can be used for anything you want. You can give your lab a name and a title. It'll always begin to wrap after a certain number of characters, but when you get out of it, it'll go ahead and stretch it out into one line. So we can use labels even for writing the entire instructions for a lab. So there's really unlimited use for labels and it's a good idea to have everything labeled nicely so that the next person that comes along and looks at your diagram knows what's going on. The common things, of course, device labels, interface labels, like we've got here, and then the third one, IP addresses, or even just networks. These are common labels that are used. And now that we've discussed labels, let's take a look at our drawing shapes. And we do have a few options to discuss here. And we have a full palette of colors that we can choose from for these shapes. And what they're usually used for is just somehow highlighting or segmenting uh, part of our network visually. So our options for drawing, um, starting with a straight line, and just like that implies. And with our straight line, we can draw it at any angle we want. But once we draw it and we unclick on the mouse, meaning once that we start with our line, we draw it and we start and drag and drop and we unclick with our mouse, that line is stuck. So we can't lengthen that line, we can't change its angle, but we can grab onto that line and we can move it around the diagram. The next one, a rectangle. We could draw a rectangle, it falls under the same rule as the line though. We can't resize it once we've made it, but we can move it around and likewise with an ellipse, we can make them all different sizes, but once we lift up and say, I'm done, you're stuck with that size. We can move it anywhere around the diagram, but we aren't able to resize it. We just have to recreate it if we wanted to create a different size. And then the last one, it looks kind of like a snowman falling over, is the freeform drawing. And it falls into the same rules. You can draw anything. You can freeform with a mouse if you're good at drawing. And once you're done, you're stuck with that shape. You can move it around, but you can't change it in any way. So if we look at the drawing options here, we can see we've got a straight line and we can select a color. I'll go with green and I can draw a straight line. Now, once I draw this and I unclick my mouse and lift up, 
that's it. If I click escape to get out of a drawing modes, see my cursor is kind of a target. I can grab onto this line and I can move it around, but I can't stretch it out and I can't lift up with it and change it to a 45 degree angle. I'm stuck with its shape and direction once I'm done with it. So let's get rid of this line. Next option would be a rectangle. We can go in and again, choose any color we want in the palette and rectangles are often used to highlight things. And let's say that we wanna put something like, oh, I don't know, the, these guys are in a DHCP pool or something and these are the hosts and that's unique. Well, we could put this segment around them and put a label in that describes it. And just like the line, now that I've created this box, I can't change its size, but I can take it and I can move it around. And next shape is the ellipse. Let's go with red. And again, as I'm drawing it and I haven't lifted up on my mouse button yet, I can continue to change its size. But once I lift up on that mouse button, that's it. I'm done. I'm stuck with that shape and I can move it around to different places, but I can't make it any bigger or any flatter or anything else. And the last one, the free form. So we can click on that and lots of folks will use this to sometimes, you know, draw like the cloud icon, of course. So it's uh, very difficult to draw with the mouse, but you could of course try and not very good with it. So that's a failure, but just like other shapes, once I'm done, I'm done, can't move, can't really resize it, but I can move it around and can't edit it. So that's shapes and they come in very handy in the diagram and you can overdo it with too much color and too many shapes, but once in a while, when you've got something that needs to be segmented and highlighted, it's nice to use it. If you draw a box and it's not the right shade, just delete it and do it again. And earlier on, we showed you that you could, we could use a tool to line up your objects when we're done drawing. And it's nice because we can get them all in the same line, but it doesn't do anything for you as far as spacing. And what I've done to make sure that things are evenly spaced is we can go in and we'll draw a rectangle for instance. Now I'm trying to put the amount of space between these guys. So I can go in, I draw a rectangle about like that, and then I can save that rectangle. And now if I wanna add other devices the same distance apart, I just move my rectangle up and I put the next device in, but it's right up against this end. So that's a way of making sure things are evenly spaced as well. So that's all the tricks and tools for editing your diagram and setting things up so it looks professional. It's easy to see and it's easy to view. And I hope you guys appreciate this video and I hope you guys are excited for more to come. If you guys are looking to level up your career, make sure you guys check out the links in the description for Next Gen T, where you could take your career to the next level and become a rock star engineer. Can't wait to see you here and thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos on Packet Tracer.